One of the biggest names in Australian combat sport, undeniably Danny Green, a former 2000 Olympian, turned pro, world titles, several divisions, several belts. Not a well-known fact, but it all started in kickboxing. It certainly did, and I suppose that's how it came to pass that we're talking to Danny. I've known Greeny for a while. He's a, he's a champion fighter and uh, delivers so much when he steps in the centre ring. But it's good that he's got, he has an appreciation for, for Muay Thai and mm. kickboxing. Coming from Perth, it's a very strong state yes. in, in martial arts and Muay Thai in particular. And from when Greeny kicked off his, his combat career, you know, he was really introduced to, to mm. the, you know, the freestyle martial art, karate, then into the Thai boxing. So it's a little known fact. But uh, Green is a big supporter of us and the show and, and all things Muay Thai and kickboxing. It is time to talk kickboxing with the Green Machine. Greeny, thanks for allowing us into your beautiful room here at Crown. You've been busy of late and, uh, of course, been over to the UFC with Jamie Tahuna. How was that experience for you? Well, James Tahuna, the guy I was with, great kid and uh, very humble and he's strange. He's a bit of a, a, bit of a uh, paradox. He's a very calm, relaxed, cool kid and very, very mellow. But when the bell goes or the, the, you know, the cage door closes, you know, he turns into a flesh eater. You know, he's, he goes, you know, he just mutates and it's like a football across the white line, they change. Yeah. He's, not a, he's not a vicious guy at all. He's a very calm, humble guy. So it was great to be associated with him and to help him out because I really got a lot of time with the kid. <clears throat> he's got a, uh, you know, a really good attitude to fighting. He's a goer and he puts his nuts on the line. It was difficult not fighting because it was strange, you know, it was like, cool. I didn't like it that much because I wanted to be in there cracking it myself. <laughs> when it wasn't going his way, well, I was like, oh, I want to jump in and give him a hand. But uh, it's different because you almost feel helpless. And when I was leaning over the cage, Jimmy's pacing up and down like a, you know, like a dog on a leash ready to be let off the chain. Uh, that was, you know, it was like, it was pretty intense. I've never seen it because I've always been the one that's doing it. And uh, the smaller gloves, it's, they just tend to cut a lot more. Whereas I'd say that a boxer over 12 rounds in the championship fights, would, would uh, you know accumulate a lot more damage, a lot more. And it's a lot. It's a lot more uh, brutal because they're copying a lot more shots. So although the UFC looks brutal, I know it's brutal. I know it's tough, and it's a real tough gig. But boxing, on the other hand, is uh, I guess people don't realise because it doesn't tend to be as much blood, but the constant Resolve. in the face and the head, yeah. and and the fighters are different. There's a different skill level. Mm. UFC. They're two different sports, especially now being, you know, I've experienced it firsthand, being in the corner with, with an elite fighter in the UFC, you get to see they're two different sports. It was a great experience and got a lot of respect for any fighters, kickboxing, wrestling, jiu-jitsu, MMA, UFC, boxing, whatever it is. Anyone who gets in there and puts their nuts in the line, you got me. You spoke before a little bit about liking to, to watch the guys that are raw and have that raw talent. Of course, also the guys with the, the, the biggest resolve, the hardest resolve. Tell us a little bit more about that. It's not something you can teach. You're born with that. You're born with that resolve. You're born with that, that uh, I guess, that stupidity and that, um, <clears throat> that, that resilience and that, that, you know, that grunt. A lot of fighters have fought with uh, under incredible duress, with you know, broken jaw and a broken nose. At the same time, I've fought with broken hands, broken jaws, broken nose. Yep. A lot of fighters have done it. Yep. You know, it's not, it's not, we're not unique, but a lot of fighters don't do it. And a lot of fighters, and that's what, you know, I, I respect guys who, who will, doesn't matter what level you're at, doesn't matter if you're world champion or you're just a beginner. If you, if you, if you keep going, you keep, you know, you roll your sleeves up and you get into it. When you're, uh, when you're hurting, when you're injured, when you're down the dumps, or when you're on the canvas and you jump up when you shouldn't jump up, you get up and you keep going. And if the ref calls you off, no problem, but you get up and you keep going. You've seen a lot of kickboxing fights. You've, you've analysed their technique. If there was any one bit of advice that you could give uh, to any of the kickboxing fighters or an up-and-coming kickboxing fighter, technically, what, what would it be? Yeah, Hammer, I've spied you know, kickboxers in the past on a few occasions, and 
I'm impressed with the hands that a lot of the guys have and they're starting to put them together a lot more and starting to, I think, value the hands a lot more. Yeah. I'd say probably the jab is very underestimated and very underused in kickboxing and it's a punch that's obviously you don't have to commit that well. Yeah. So the right hand you got to commit, yeah. left hook you got to commit if you want to land flush. If you want to land a good left hook you have to commit, yeah. right hand you got to commit, uppercut you got to commit. Yeah. From a distance you can throw a left jab and that really does set a lot of things up and they usually stiffen up and they're straightened up which then leaves their legs closer together and their legs straight which then you can really come down and chop down with a fly kick. So probably the jab would be the most underused shot that kickboxers throw. You had a lot of great achievements in your career, had some great fights, coming off a great win last time out, but where to from here for Danny Green? Not uh, Look, Hammer, I honestly haven't made a decision on, on my immediate future in the fight game. Look, the hardest thing for me is going to be, like all fighters go through, uh, is to not fight again. Yeah. Because it is a drug, it is, it is the most alluring, most mesmerising, most adrenalizing drug that you can ever have when you walk in that arena there's 18,000 people pumping there's you know potentially millions worldwide watching and it's just a it's a jackhammer of an atmosphere and it's just and it's just imploding in on you and then you you know you are successful and you you do what you've trained to do for six to eight weeks um, potentially you know knowing that you're gonna get knocked unconscious and you come out on top and you're victorious it's a real hard it's a real hard uh, situation to match yeah. and then to go from that. So I've gone from those kind of fights, I've won, I've, I've lost as well and then I've come back and I've won again. And uh, then to go, you know, two days later, <clears throat> you know, playing Santa Claus at your, uh, at your son's school with a, you know, depressed cheekbone and a fractured jaw and a busted nose and having to wear sunglasses and literally can't move because you're still busted up pretty badly but you know, they can't see the punishment from the big <laughs> fluffy beard. Going on a normal dad, it's you know it's such a such a you know a, a variation in emotions. Yeah. But for me, I'm a father first and foremost, and that's what's uh, the most. I guess uh, it's thrilling. It really is to be a dad and to you know have have uh, have two healthy kids. I'm, I'm extremely blessed. So my fighting future, I've got to look at when I'm 50 and 60 years old. I've been taking punishment to the face and the head and the brain for 22 years. I've, you know, I've walked through it and I've never gone backwards and taken a back step. So I'm really wary of, of, of what my future holds in the fight game. Uh, and I'm a fighter first and foremost and I don't think anyone could deny that as far as you know, what I've achieved in the ring and what I've done and how I've conducted myself inside the ring. So look, I'm not sure what I want to do but I've retired once as world champion. I think to retire again as world champion, I don't think anyone's ever done that. It's pretty unique. But as a fighter, as a real fighter, he could look himself in the mirror and go, man, I had a dig. I took on the best. Sometimes I won, sometimes it was KO, but I had a dig. Um, it's hard to walk away, but also I also have to be intelligent enough to realise that there is life after boxing, and I'm setting that up now, and it can't last forever. And the hardest thing is knowing physically and mentally I have the desire, and physically I have the ability to do it, but uh, you've got to know when to pull the shoot. Well, Greeny, mate, as always, it's been insightful and, and entertaining and I uh, really appreciate your time, mate, and we wish you all the best for the future from all the, all the Hammer Time viewers and myself. Thanks, mate.